everybody and welcome to Observing with Webb, a special edition. Um, I decided that I've been asked at least twice already on social media uh, about, hey, I want to buy a telescope for Christmas. I want to buy a telescope for my friend. Uh, what should I get them? And so I thought I would just do a very quick look at what is out there. Um, I'm, this isn't very well structured. Really all I'm doing is going to oriontelescopes.com and just looking through their list uh, and just trying to point out the things, uh, some of my favorite telescopes to suggest, uh, some things to avoid, and um, uh, some things to take into consideration when you buy something. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, you want to know your budget. Okay, you're not going to get anything worth your while for anything less than 50 bucks. It's just not going to happen. Uh, also, I'm going to go all the way up to about, let's see, the most expensive I'll talk about is $600, which I don't really want to get into that. But um, if you have that much to spend, go to an astronomy club meeting and talk to somebody personally before you spend that much money. But um, let me just show you a couple things. Uh, first of all, some things you want to avoid uh, in general, especially as a beginner. That's where I'm coming from, the beginner uh, who doesn't have any experience, who's never taken an astronomy class, or uh, just somebody who wants to go out there and have fun. Some things I would avoid if I were you. One, I would avoid uh, uh, mounts such as this, like this tripod mount here. Um, it, they just tend to be very flimsy and they don't work very well and it's hard to move around. I would avoid mounts like this one. Um, again, it's a tripod mount and it's, there's a little fork up here that you can see. I wish these pictures were bigger, but you know, um, there we go. A uh, little fork mount right there. Again, just flimsy, not that great. And honestly, I've tried them. They're kind of awkward. Um, also to avoid... Let's see, do, 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 where they go? Ah, here we go. These equatorial mounts. Now, I know the, that type of equatorial mount, you'll see them a lot. They're cheap to make, uh, not a big deal. And it's the stuff that you're used to seeing. Don't get it. It's complicated. Um, I mean, unless you really have the time to sit down and look through it, that stuff is really complicated. Uh, you need a lot of patience for it. You kind of got to know what you're doing. So for a beginner, I would say avoid that kind. That is the number one type of um, mount that I get donated to the planetarium uh, because people don't want it anymore. So, uh, okay, so this is my number one, uh, uh, my number one suggestion. This is the Celestron First Scope Reflector Telescope. Look at the mount. It's super easy to use. All you do is just twist it this way, northeast, southwest, and up for altitude, how high you want to look. You put it on a table, you sit down, you look through it, um, and the optics are okay. They're good. Uh, it's small, it's portable, uh, and it's 50 bucks. You really can't beat that. If you're really just testing the waters of astronomy and you want to get something to just look at Saturn, look at Jupiter, look at Venus, look at the moon, that is definitely the way to go because you can buy better stuff later. Um, oh, by the way, I'm on Orion Telescopes or telescope.com. I really trust them. There's other sites like OptCore, um, but I would not buy it off of Walmart. I would not buy it. You might, you might be able to buy it off of Amazon, probably not eBay. I would go to a reputable source like a place that actually sells telescopes and pretty much just telescopes. Um, so also here you've got the fun scope. Uh, this one I believe is a little bit bigger than the Celestron, maybe about the same size. Um, it's just got a little better design and a viewfinder right here. Uh, so that's going to be 60, 70 bucks, a little more expensive, uh, but it's still just as good. I pretty much rank them as equal. Avoid something like this, the travel refractor. I have that one. It, the, it just doesn't quite work. It's flimsy. Flimsy. Probably flimsy. Ah, here we go. Now, this has a moon kit. It's basically the fun scope again. Uh, and you can find different levels of a lot of these scopes where they come with different packages and stuff. Honestly, the packages, I never use any of that, but oh well. Now, if you want to step it up, you don't want to spend 50 bucks, you want to get uh, a better telescope, see, um, see better stuff, try this Orion Skyscanner 100mm tabletop. 
Now that's, uh, let's see, that's 100. The first one I talked about was 76. So uh, this is going to be about a third bigger in a sense. Um, and it's got pretty good optic. it's optics. It's going to have, uh, you're going to be able to see dimmer things more brightly. You're going to be able to see them better because the, uh, the mirror at the bottom is bigger. And this one is just, uh, it's a step up. It really is. Um, avoid that type of mount, 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 avoid that type of mount. This is, nah, just skip it. Avoid that kind of mount. Oh, here's a decent one like a tabletop. Here's the problem. I like the tabletops, like I said, but I don't like this refractor. I have it, um, and I have it on a different mount, but this eyepiece thing here, the threading, it just doesn't quite work right. Uh, and I don't think these refractors are all that good. That's just my opinion. Um, perhaps I could use it better. Uh, again, I don't like that mount. I don't like that mount. I don't like that mount. Do you sense a theme here? This one might be good. I didn't get to look at it too much. That looks like a little heavier duty mount for 150 bucks. Um, looks like you have a star pointer making it easy to aim the telescope. So uh, that might be okay. Um, but I wouldn't say I recommend it. Uh, this is just a scope itself, so you would need to buy a mount. Don't buy a scope thinking you're gonna hold it up. Bad idea. Um, now, this is actually a pretty good bundle here because it's a tabletop, but it also comes with a tripod. It comes with a little mount. Um, it's 100 millimeters, so it's bigger uh, than the very first $50 one we, we, we talked about. Um, but it comes with a tripod, which if you don't have a table outside to put your telescope on, that works out pretty well. Um, let's see. Yeah, the field tripod's pretty cool. I feel like that's a bit of a price hike just for the tripod, but um, here we go. Now here's the Orion Fun Scope, four and a half inch reflector. Let's see, four and a half inches. That's only a half inch bigger than that 100 millimeter we just talked about. And um, I don't know, that seems like a big, uh, a big hike um, in price. I would go back to the 50, 60, 70, 100 dollar scope, tabletop scope for that amount of money. Uh, skip that one because it's a refractor. I would suggest a reflector as a beginner. And oh, if you want to step it up, if you can spend two hundred dollars to get better optics, this is a Maxitov Cassegrain telescope. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of why it's better, but it's just a better scope. Uh, it's a 90 millimeter, which is smaller, but they, uh, the way the optics are, it just works out being pretty darn good. Uh, I have this uh, scope here on a different mount, and I like it. It works really well. So if you have $200, you want the person to get good stuff, there you go. Again, avoid those types of mounts. No, no fun. No fun at all. Uh, now, if you're getting a bit bigger, um, this is another, no, we'll, we'll skip that one. Go on, going, going, going. Ah, here's where we start really stepping up. If you have $250 laying around, you can get something with one of these um, motorized tracks. Um, it'll line up. I believe this is the kind where you point it at three stars in the sky, and it'll line up, and you can just track objects. It'll actually move the telescope with the sky, with the Earth's rotation. Um, and, and that's great. It just, it takes time to set up and you need to have some of a knowledge of the night sky and what the stars are in order to actually use that effectively. So, you know, take that into consideration. For a nine-year-old, no way would I get, well, maybe some of the really smart ones. Uh, but if they don't know stuff about the sky or want to know that stuff, that's not really going to be a help. Um, but if you're looking to buy me one, I'll take it. Uh, now, if you go down here for the same thing, 250 bucks, you can get a really big, big four and a half inch Dobsonian. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, that, that's nice. I just find them to be really big. Um, and I, I don't know, I just don't think they're worth the hassle some of the time. Um, if you were to get a tracker one, like I was talking about, I would get this one because it's got the reflector on it. I think that's a much better scope than the refractor. 
uh, if you're willing to spend that much money. And um, again, I would avoid that kind of mount, avoid that kind of mount. Ooh, you get a red flashlight. Like I said, different levels to these things. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, now if you have $300, you can get a six inch, okay? That means it's about, it's about this big, okay? Uh, reflector for $300 and let's see uh, that's with it being six inches that's going to allow you to see uh, the Andromeda galaxy better because you've got more light collecting ability it's going to help you see uh, clusters it's going to help you see other galaxies that sort of thing the milk eh, maybe not the Milky Way uh, but other maybe nebulous stuff like that it's not going to help you see the planets any better. If you're focusing on Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, um, you're, you don't really need something that big. I, I wouldn't get it. Uh, or the moon. You don't need something that big for the moon. Uh, so here's that Maxitov Cassegrain, like I said, with the tripod bundle. I would like that if I'm spending a good bit of money. I want good stuff, but I still want it to be simple. Uh, let me scroll down, scroll down... Ah, now, if you have a good bit of money to spend, these Star Seekers are pretty good because they come on a mount that can track objects like the, like the other little one before. So, you, again, you do have to know what you're talking about. you got to know where stars are so that you can align it. Um, but after that, it's actually pretty easy uh, to use that. So uh, they tend to be pretty portable. I would buy a bag with it. And... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. I like the Star Seeker model. It, 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 it works out pretty well. Um, looks like there's some 8-inch Dobsonians. So 8 inches, so that means the mirror is going to be about this big. Okay. All right. Which, again, will help you see dimmer and dimmer objects. And uh, looks like they have some interesting stuff going on there. Um, so one, once you get to this point... Um, it's, it's, you should have some knowledge. You, you, you should know what you're talking about. Um, for a very beginner, I would not go into this $500, $600 realm. It's just, it's not worth it. Again, if you're buying for the very, very first time and you just want to test the waters, I would suggest that. Get a first scope or get a fun scope. Those are great. You can see the planets. You can see the moon. All you got to do is point it. Um... And they're just, they're, they're pretty friendly. Uh, I think they're very friendly. And then if you want to step up and get better optics, you can do something like this uh, for $100. Those would be my suggestions for beginners, especially if you're giving it as a gift and the person doesn't know much about astronomy. Now, my last point, though. If you're buying a gift for an astronomer, don't buy them a gift. Buy them a gift card or ask them what they want um, because if they, know, if they know what they're talking about um, and you don't as the giver, uh, chances are it'll be disappointing uh, just because people who know astronomy and are doing astronomy, they, they can be picky, not necessarily because they want to be picky, but because and I, like, you have to match things up to the type of telescope and it just, you know, we want to make sure we're spending the money right. So I would suggest getting a gift card as opposed to just buying a telescope. But if you're buying for a kid or they know they just want a telescope to work with, again, I like the first scope and I like the fun scope. I think they're great. Uh, in fact, the fun scope we have at the Lidditz Library and uh, they put it out on loan so that you can actually use it. Uh, but anyway, um, that's it. I just wanted to put that out there. So if you're looking to buy a telescope... Uh, you kind of know the basics of what's available to you. Again, do not buy from Walmart. Do not go for the, oh, it'll magnify 1,000 times. It's not about magnification, okay? Uh, it just does, tends to not look good. Don't buy a, a, a flimsy mount. Um, I would go with my suggestions up here. So um, anyway, with that... Um, I guess I'll wish you very clear dark skies for December and January when you buy this stuff or receive it.